Harry Leroy Halliday III, May 14, 1977 November 7, 2017, known as Roy Halliday, was an American professional baseball player who pitched for the Toronto Blue Jays and Philadelphia Phillies between 1998 and 2013. His nickname, Doc, was coined by Toronto Blue Jays announcer Tom Cheek, and was a reference to Wild West gunslinger Doc Holliday. Halliday was chosen by the Blue Jays with their first selection in the 1995 MLB draft and was the 17th overall pick. He played for the team from 1998 through 2009. After being traded to Philadelphia in 2009, Halliday pitched for the Phillies from 2010 to 2013. He was known for his ability to pitch effectively deep into games and, at the time of his retirement, was the active major league leader in complete games with 67, including 20 shutouts. On May 29, 2010, Halliday pitched the 20th perfect game in Major League Baseball history, beating the Florida Marlins by a score of 1-0. On October 6, 2010, in his first postseason start, Halliday threw the second no-hitter in MLB postseason history, Don Larson's perfect game in the 1956 World Series being the first, against the Cincinnati Reds in Game 1 of the 2010 NLDS. This feat made Halliday the fifth pitcher in Major League history, and the first since Nolan Ryan in 1973, to throw multiple no-hitters in the same calendar year, including the postseason. During the 2012 season, he became the 67th pitcher to record 2,000 career strikeouts. Halliday was also one of six pitchers in MLB history to win the Cy Young Award in both the American and National Leagues. On November 7, 2017, Halliday died when his Icon A5 amphibious plane crashed into the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Florida. The Blue Jays organization posthumously retired his number 32 on March 29, 2018. Halliday was announced as an inductee to the National Baseball Hall of Fame on January 22, 2019. He is the first posthumously elected player since Ron Santo in 2012 and the first elected by the Bibois since Roberto Clemente in 1973. Early Life Born in Denver, Colorado, Halliday grew up in the suburb of Arvada. His father, Roy II, was a pilot for a food processing company while his mother, Linda, was a homemaker. From an early age, Halliday loved baseball, trying every position on the field until, by age 14, his success on the pitcher's mound attracted the attention of major league scouts. By the age of 13, he had begun training with Colorado baseball guru Bus Campbell, who had helped almost every promising pitcher from the Denver area, including Goose Gossage and Brad Lidge. In 1995, after graduating from Arvada West High School, he was selected by the Toronto Blue Jays in the amateur draft, in the first round, as the 17th overall pick. Halliday decided to forego his college baseball commitment to Arizona and sign with Toronto. He was promoted to the Major League Club as a September call-up in 1998. Career Toronto Blue Jays, 1998-2009 1998-2001 In his second career start, against the Detroit Tigers on September 27, 1998, Halliday had what would have been the third no-hitter ever pitched on the final day of a regular season broken up with two outs in the ninth. The feat would have joined the combined no-hitter by four Oakland Athletics pitchers, Vita Blue, Glenn Abbott, Paul Lindblad, and Raleigh Fingers in 1975 and Mike Witt's perfect game in 1984. The bid was broken up by pinch hitter Bobby Higginson's solo home run, the only hit allowed in a 2-1 Toronto victory, as he recorded his first major league win. Prior to the home run, the sole base runner had reached on an infield error in the fifth inning, as Halliday struck out eight and walked none. During the 2000 season, Halliday sported a 10.64 earned run average, era, in 19 games, 13 of which he started, making his 2000 season the worst in history for any pitcher with at least 50 innings pitched. At the beginning of the 2001 season, Halliday was optioned to Class A Dunedin to rebuild his delivery. 
Halliday's fastball was clocked up to 95 and NBSP, MPH, 153 and NBSP, KM slash H, but it had little movement, and his pitches were up in the strike zone, which was ultimately the reason why his 2000 season was so unsuccessful. He worked with former Blue Jays pitching coach Mel Queen. The problem, Queen realized, was Halliday's total reliance on his strength his attempt to overpower batters with straight-ahead pitches. Within two weeks, Halliday had altered his arm angle for a more deceptive delivery, and added pitches that sank and careened. Instead of throwing over the top, he chose to use a three-quarters delivery, the middle point between throwing overhand and sidearm. Originally a fastball pitcher, he became reliant on keeping his pitches low across the plate, regardless of the type of pitch thrown. The adjustments proved successful. After a month and a half, he was promoted to AA Tennessee, and a month later, to AAA Syracuse. By midseason, he was back in the Blue Jays' rotation. He posted a 5-3 win-loss record with a 3.19 era for the Blue Jays in 16 starts in 2001. 2002-2006 Halliday with Toronto in 2006 In 2001, after being demoted to the minor leagues, Halliday immersed himself in the works of sports psychologist Harvey Dorfman. This exposure was at least partly responsible for resurrecting his career. In 2002, Halliday had a breakout season, finishing with a 19-7 record while posting a 2.93 era with 168 strikeouts in 239.1 innings. Halliday was named to the American League All-Star team. Halliday continued his success in the 2003 season, posting a 22-7 record with a 3.25 era in 266 innings. He also recorded 204 strikeouts and only 32 walks, good for a 6.38 strikeout-to-walk ratio. Halliday pitched the first extra-inning shutout in the major leagues since Jack Morris in Game 7 of the 1991 World Series, leading the Blue Jays to victory over the Tigers on September 6. He pitched 10 innings and had not allowed a hit until Kevin Witt doubled with two outs in the top of the eighth. Halliday won the American League Cy Young Award, while being once again named an All-Star and leading the Blue Jays to a surprising 86 victories. He was named by his peers as the Players' Choice Awards AL Outstanding Pitcher. He was also named the Sporting News AL Pitcher of the Year and the Baseball Prospectus Internet Baseball Awards AL Cy Young Award winner. In 2004, Halliday was placed on the disabled list twice due to right shoulder problems. In just 133.0 innings, he went 8-8 with a 4.20 era. He walked 39 batters seven more than he had walked in 2003 when he had pitched twice as many innings. He later revealed that he had been injured throughout the entire season with a tired throwing arm, which he believed was from intense workouts in pre-season. The 2005 season began successfully for Halliday, as he posted a 12-4 record with a 2.41 era in 19 starts. He was selected to his third All-Star team and was slated to be the starting pitcher for the American League at the All-Star Game in Detroit. However, on July 8, Halliday's leg was broken by a line drive off the bat of Texas Rangers left fielder Kevin Mensch. As a result, he was replaced in the All-Star Game by Matt Clement of the Boston Red Sox, while Mark Burrell of the Chicago White Sox was named the starting pitcher for the American League. Despite rehabilitation of his leg, Halliday would sit out the remainder of the season. On March 16, 2006, Halliday signed a $40 million three-year contract extension through 2010. During that year, Halliday finished near the top of the MLB in wins with 16. He was named to the American League All-Star team as a reserve on July 3, along with four of his Blue Jays teammates. It marked the second most appearances in club history and Halliday's fourth as an All-Star. Although Halliday's strikeout total was lower in 2006 than in previous seasons, his ground ball-slash-fly ball ratio, complete games, and innings pitched were all among the American League leaders. 2007-2009 Halliday was the American League Pitcher of the Month in April 2007, going 4-0, 
highlighted by a 10-inning complete game win over the Detroit Tigers. However, he pitched poorly in his two starts in May, and on May 11th was placed on the disabled list and underwent an appendectomy. He returned to the rotation in his usual form on May 31st against the Chicago White Sox. Halladay went seven innings, giving up just six hits and allowing no runs on his way to his 100th career win. 2007 also saw Halladay hit his first career RBI. Against the Los Angeles Dodgers on June 10th, his ground ball single to center field allowed John McDonald to score. He shut out the Seattle Mariners on July 22nd, allowing only three hits. In 2008, for the sixth consecutive year, Halladay was Toronto's opening day starter, improving his own club record. He lost 3-2 in a pitcher's duel with New York's Jianming Wang. His first win of the season came in his next start against Boston, when he outpitched Josh Beckett in his season debut. In his third start, Halladay pitched a complete game against the Texas Rangers, in a 4-1 win. Three of his nine complete game efforts resulted in losses due to Toronto's underachieving offense early in the season. In fact, those three complete game losses came in three consecutive starts. On June 20 against the Pittsburgh Pirates, he was struck in the temple by a line drive off the bat of Niger Morgan. The ball caromed off Halladay's head and was caught by third baseman Scott Rowland, ending the inning. Halladay was able to walk back to the dugout, but was taken out of the game for safety concerns. Although he was given a clean bill of health for his next start, it was later suggested by television commentators that Halladay may have in fact suffered a temporary lapse in recognition of what happened on the play. Halladay pitched his 10th career shutout against the Seattle Mariners on June 30. He limited them to four hits in his sixth complete game of the season. The shutout tied him with the Cardinals' Mark Mulder for 10th among active pitchers. On July 11, 2008, Halladay pitched his seventh complete game and second shutout of the season against the New York Yankees, allowing zero runs on two hits for his 38th career complete game. Halladay was named to the American League All-Star team as a reserve. He pitched in the fourth inning, yielding only one hit and striking out Lance Berkman. In his last start of the season, he fittingly pitched a complete game against the Yankees to win his 20th game of the year. In so doing, he became the first pitcher to win five games against the Yankees in a single season since Luis Tiant in 1974. In addition, he led the AL with a 1.05 whip. Halladay finished second in the American League Cy Young Award voting, behind Cliff Lee of Cleveland. He also led the AL with nine complete games, and struck out a career-high 206 batters, two more than his 2003 season, as well as posting a 2.78 era, the second best of his career, that was second only to Cliff Lee's 2.54 era. Halladay also became just the fourth pitcher in Major League history to post two seasons of 200 strikeouts and fewer than 40 walks. He was presented the George Gross slash Toronto Sun Sports Person of the Year Award. On April 6, 2009, Halladay made his team record seventh straight opening day start for Toronto, defeating the Detroit Tigers. Halladay then also won his next two starts, on the road against Cleveland and Minnesota. Halladay lost his next game to Texas, giving up five earned runs over eight innings only to go on and win his next six games to bring his record up to 8-1 with a 2.75 era. With season-ending injuries to planned 2009 Jays starters Dustin McGowan and Sean Markham, and with number 2 starter Jesse Lich on the disabled list early in the season, Halladay led a staff of young, mostly inexperienced starters. Halladay was named the AL Player of the Week for the period ending May 17. Doc was 2-0 with a 1.13 era over 16.0 innings in his two starts the week prior. In a game against the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim on June 2, Halladay struck out 14 batters and threw 133 pitches, both career highs. On June 12, he left the game early because of a strained hip adductor muscle, commonly referred to as a pulled groin, and was placed on the 15-day disabled list on June 17. On July 5, he was selected to represent Toronto at the All-Star Game. On July 14, 
he started the All-Star game for the American League, pitching two innings and giving up three runs, of which one was unearned. That year, he was named number seven on the Sporting News S list of the 50 greatest current players in baseball. A panel of 100 baseball people, many of them members of the Baseball Hall of Fame and winners of major baseball awards, was polled to arrive at the list. As of the conclusion of his start on September 20, 2009, Halliday was tied for the second longest streak in the American League that season with a 24 inning scoreless streak. Halliday finished the season with a 17 10 record, giving him a career win percentage of .660, good enough for 18th all time. In December, Sports Illustrated named Halliday as one of the five pitchers in the starting rotation of its MLB All Decade team. Philadelphia Phillies, 2010 2013. On December 15, 2009, the Blue Jays traded Halliday to the Philadelphia Phillies for minor league prospects Travis D'Arnaud, Kyle Drabuck, and Michael Taylor. He agreed to a contract extension worth US$60 million US dollars that included a US$20 million US dollars vesting option for a fourth season. Phillies general manager Ruben Amaro, Jr. had unsuccessfully attempted to get Halliday at the non-waiver trade deadline in July 2009 then traded for Cliff Lee instead. Three hours before Halliday signed the contract extension, Amaro traded away Lee, to the surprise of Halliday who thought that Lee would be his teammate. 2010 Halliday Pitching for the Phillies On opening day, Halliday pitched seven innings while giving up a run against the Washington Nationals in his first game with the Phillies. He had nine strikeouts and allowed six hits. He also drove in his second career RBI and earned his first win of the season. He followed this start with a complete game on April 11 against the Houston Astros, giving up one unearned run while striking out eight and not giving up any walks in the Phillies' 2-1 victory. Halliday pitched his first shutout in the National League, against the Atlanta Braves on April 21, becoming the first pitcher to reach four wins in the 2010 season. On May 1, Halliday pitched his second shutout of the season, limiting the New York Mets to three hits and striking out six. On September 21, Halliday became the first Phillies pitcher to win 20 games in a season since Steve Carlton accomplished it in 1982. He was the first right-handed Phillies pitcher to accomplish the feat since Robin Roberts in 1955. One week later, on September 27, he completed his 21st victory, helping the Phillies clinch their fourth consecutive National League East title, and the Phillies finished with the best regular season record in MLB. Halliday made his first postseason start in Game 1 of the National League Division Series, as the Phillies squared off against the Cincinnati Reds. Halliday threw a no-hitter, giving up only one walk, to Jay Bruce in the fifth inning, in a 4-0 victory where he threw 104 pitches. Halliday's was only the second postseason no-hitter in Major League Baseball history, and the first since Don Larson's perfect game in the 1956 World Series. Halliday became the first pitcher in Major League history to throw a perfect game and another no-hitter in the same calendar year, including the postseason. The Phillies swept the Reds in three games to advance to their third consecutive National League Championship Series, where they faced the San Francisco Giants. Halliday started Games 1 and 5, which were one of the most touted postseason pitching matchups in recent history as he faced another former Cy Young winner in both games, Timlin Seacom. Halliday lost Game 1 4 3 and won Game 5 4 2, as the Phillies were eliminated in six games by the Giants, who went on to win the World Series. Halliday was named by his peers as the Players' Choice Awards NL Outstanding Pitcher. He was also unanimously chosen as the recipient of the 2010 National League Cy Young Award, becoming the first Philly to win the award since Steve Bedrosian in 1987 and only the fifth pitcher in MLB history to win the award in both leagues, joining Gaylord Perry, Pedro Martinez, Randy Johnson, and Roger Clemens. He was likewise selected as the Sporting News NL Pitcher of the Year, the USA Today NL Cy Young the Baseball Prospectus Internet Baseball Awards NL Cy Young, and the winner of the NLBM Wilbur Bullet Rogan Legacy Award, NL Pitcher of the Year.
he also was named the MLB This Year in Baseball Awards Starting Pitcher of the Year. Baseball Digest named him its Pitcher of the Year, including both leagues. Baseball America named him its Major League Player of the Year, including all positions in both leagues. MLB named him its MLB Clutch Performer of the Year. He was given the Heart and Amp, Hustle Award by the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association. He was also named Pro Athlete of the Year by both the Sporting News and the Philadelphia Sports Writers Association and Sports Person of the Year by the Philadelphia Daily News. The Philadelphia chapter of the Baseball Writers Association of America presented him the Steve Carlton Most Valuable Pitcher and Dallas Green Special Achievement Awards. In 250 and NBSP, 2. 3 innings pitched, Halladay finished the 2010 regular season with a 21-10 record and a 2.44 era, setting a career high with 219 strikeouts while issuing just 30 walks. He led the National League in wins, innings pitched, and complete games, 9, including 4 shutouts. He became just the seventh pitcher in the history of Major League Baseball to pitch 250 or more innings with 30 or fewer walks the first pitcher to do so since Grover Cleveland Alexander in 1923 with the Chicago Cubs. Perfect Game Main Article, Roy Halladay's Perfect Game On May 29, 2010, Halladay pitched the 20th perfect game in MLB history, against the Florida Marlins in Miami retiring all 27 batters and striking out 11, allowing no hits, runs, walks, or errors. This was the first time in the modern era that two pitchers, Dallas Braden of the Oakland A's and Halladay, had thrown perfect games in the same month and that multiple perfect games had been achieved in the same season. When Halladay's former manager, CITO Gaston, called to congratulate him, Halladay was unable to take the call because he was busy with the post-game media frenzy. On August 24, 2010, to commemorate his perfect game, Halladay presented around 60 Swiss-made Baumet and Mercier watches he had purchased to everyone in the clubhouse. The watches were presented in brown boxes that bore the inscription, We did it together. Thanks, Roy Halladay. Additionally, the back of each watch was engraved with the date of the game, the line score, and the individual recipient's name. Postseason no-hitter Roy Halladay and Don Larson, the only two pitchers to throw postseason no-hitters in MLB history. On October 6, 2010, in his first postseason appearance, Halladay pitched a no-hitter, his second of the season, against the Cincinnati Reds in the first game of the National League Division Series. NLDS. He became the second player ever to pitch a no-hitter in the postseason, joining Don Larson of the 1956 New York Yankees, who pitched a perfect game in the World Series. He also became the first pitcher since Nolan Ryan in 1973 to throw two no-hitters in a season, as well as the seventh pitcher to hurl both a perfect game and a regular no-hitter in his career joining Cy Young, Addie Joss, Jim Bunning, Sandy Cowfax, Randy Johnson, and Mark Burrell. Halladay allowed just one walk to right fielder Jay Bruce with two outs in the fifth inning, and faced just one batter above the minimum 27. This also marked the first time in Major League history that a pitcher threw a perfect game and another no-hitter in the same calendar year, including the postseason. The fans voted his no-hitter as the This Year in Baseball Awards Postseason Moment of the Year. 2011 Halladay delivers a pitch in 2011. For the 2011 season, Halladay was joined by Cliff Lee, who before the 2010 season had been traded away from the Phillies shortly before Halladay joined. The resulting starting pitching lineup of Halladay, Lee, Cole Hamels, Roy Oswalt, and Joe Blanton had commentators dub it one of the best rotations ever assembled. Halladay, Oswalt, Lee, and Hamels were dubbed the Fantastic Fower by fans and the media. On April 24, 2011, Halladay struck out 14 and allowed just five hits in the game as his team swept the San Diego Padres in all four games. Halladay took a two-hitter into the ninth before allowing three straight singles. He allowed just one run and one, three-one. Halladay in 2011 In May, 
Hawade was named the 2011 winner of the John Wanamaker Athletic Award, by the Philadelphia Sports Congress, based on his 2010 season. In June, Halade was presented the Best Major League Baseball Player a Spy Award, for his performance since June 2010. On July 12, Halade was the NL starting pitcher in the All-Star Game. Halade went 19-6 in 2011, with a 2.35 era, and pitched eight complete games, second most in the majors. The Phillies won their fifth consecutive National League East Championship and also finished with the best record in baseball for the second straight year. Halade was named the starter for Games 1 and 5 during the National League Division Series against the St. Louis Cardinals. He won Game 1 11-6, but lost the Game 5-1-0, which was a duel with former Blue Jays teammate Chris Carpenter. This loss eliminated the Phillies from the playoffs, a disappointment as they were touted as heavy favorites for the World Series and it would turn out to be Halliday's final postseason appearance. Reflecting on that series at his retirement, Halliday said I think the one thing I took away from that is you can have the best team on paper, you can have the guys who want it the most. But when the squirrel runs across home plate while your team is trying to pitch, there is nothing you can do about that. Halliday finished second in the NL Cy Young voting to Clayton Kershaw of the Los Angeles Dodgers. He was selected as one of the three starting pitchers on the MLB Insiders Club magazine all-postseason team. In December, Halliday was named the Sports Person of the Year by the Philadelphia Daily News for the second consecutive year. 2012 On April 5, 2012, Halliday threw eight innings of shutout ball against the Pittsburgh Pirates on opening day, giving up two hits while striking out five. On May 29, Halade was placed on the 15-day disabled list with a shoulder strain. It was his first DL stint since 2009. In a press conference on June 6, Halade stated, Ultimately, my goal is to finish my career with the Phillies and win a World Series here. Some of those things are not fully in my control, but my intent is to play here and finish my career here and be here as long as I can. Halliday stated this during his press conference about his shoulder injury, and he revealed that he would sit out three more weeks, and then reevaluate his condition. The injury would eventually be diagnosed as a strained latissimus dorsi and Halliday was hopeful he would be able to return shortly after the All-Star break in July. On July 17, Halliday came off the DL and was the starting pitcher against the Los Angeles Dodgers. He pitched five innings giving up five hits and two earned runs while fanning six in a no decision which the Phillies would go on to win, 3-2. In a loss against the Atlanta Braves on July 29, Halade recorded his 2,000th strikeout to become the 67th pitcher in MLB history to reach the milestone. Although Halade was on the DL and had the worst era since first starting off his career, he still remained above .500 going 11-8. After struggling in spring training, Halade gave up five runs in his first start in the Phillies' second game on April 3, 2013, striking out nine and three. One. Three innings pitched. After struggling in his prior starts, Halade pitched eight innings allowing just one run on April 14, 2013, against the Miami Marlins whom the Phillies defeated 2-1. Halade recorded his 200th career win in the game. On May 5, Halade gave up nine earned runs in just two, one, three innings. The next day, Halade was placed on the disabled list with a right shoulder injury. On May 8, it was announced that he would have surgery on his shoulder to have a bone spur removed. The surgery was also to address fraying of his labrum and rotator cuff. Though he was initially supposed to be making a rehab start in Double A for the Reading fight in Phils that day. An 18-inning game the previous night caused the Phillies to have a shortage of pitchers and as such, Halade returned to the major leagues on August 25 for a start against the Arizona Diamondbacks in which he threw six innings, allowing two runs on four hits with two walks and two strikeouts. Retirement Roy Halade's number 32 was retired by the Toronto Blue Jays in 2018. On December 9, 2013, 
Halade signed a ceremonial one-day contract with the Blue Jays and announced his retirement from baseball due to injury. At his press conference, Halade listed a persistent back injury, as well as wanting to be more involved with his family, as his reasons for retiring. Although retired as a player, Halade continued to be a part of the game as a guest instructor for the Philadelphia Phillies and Toronto Blue Jays. The Phillies hired Halade as a mental skills coach in March 2017. Halade also volunteered as a baseball coach at Calvary Christian High School in Clearwater, Florida where his oldest son played baseball. Halade was elected to the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame in 2017 and the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum on January 22, 2019 in his first year of eligibility, garnering 85.4% of the vote. His wife and sons announced that they did not choose a logo for his cap, which leaves Roberto Alomar as the sole Cooperstown inductee as a Blue Jay. However, Halade had said that, if given the choice, he would be inducted as a Blue Jay. Approach to Pitching Halade in 2009, showing his characteristic sinker grip. Halade's distinctiveness was characterized by his ability to throw a hard two-seam sinking fastball ranging in the low 90s with pinpoint control. In addition, he threw a four-seam fastball in the low 90s, a curveball in the high 70s, and cut fastball from 1992 and NBSP, MPH for which he had modified his grip in 2007 at the suggestion of former catcher Sal Fasano. Halade threw the hardest cutter among MLB starters in the 2011 season, at an average of 91.4 and NBSP, MPH. The changeup was one pitch that Halade had problems commanding for many years, and which he used very rarely. However, after joining the Phillies in 2010, Halade started throwing a changeup that was a variation of the split finger fastball, called a split changeup. The pitch was introduced to Halade by pitching coach Rich Duby. Despite his reputation as a ground ball pitcher who worked at an efficient pace, Halade's strikeout totals increased steadily in the few final years of his career. Halade's efficiency and durability were reflected in his total innings pitched every year, also due to his ability to strike out hitters and induce ground ball outs to escape jams. He often led the league in innings pitched and complete games while ranking among the leaders in whip and era. Prior to and during each start, Halade had a distinct trademark in which he went into a complete isolation mode, immersing himself in complete concentration in order to plan every pitch he would pitch while on the mound. During this time, he would not talk to anyone except the manager or the pitching coach. He would not even reply to a hello or wave from a teammate or spectator nor talk to the media until he had been relieved or had completed the game. Personal Life Halade had two children, Brayden and Ryan, with his wife, Brandy, Nay Gates. During the off-season, Halade lived with his family in Tarpon Springs, Florida. Halade's oldest son, Brayden, committed to play baseball at Penn State shortly after Halade's death. Brayden, who was born in Toronto, was invited to Baseball Canada's U18 spring training camp on March 6, 2018, and pitched a scoreless inning in the Canadian Junior Team's exhibition game against the Blue Jays on March 17. In the 2019 Major League Baseball draft, as a tribute to Halade, Brayden was selected by the Blue Jays in the 32nd round. While he was a member of the Toronto Blue Jays, Halade and his wife invited children and their families from the hospital for sick children into Doc's box at Rogers Center during Blue Jays games. The remodeling of the suite to be more kid-friendly was documented in an episode of Divine Design. As part of Halade's contract with the Blue Jays, he also donated $100,000 each year to the Jays Care Foundation. Halade was the Blue Jays nominee numerous times for the Roberto Clemente Award for his work with underprivileged children. For the same reason, he was also the Blue Jays nominee in 2008 for the Players' Choice Awards Marvin Miller Man of the Year Award. Halade was the cover athlete for Major League Baseball 2K11. Death